1140 The Fan. Talking money! Talking money! Well, alrighty then. We're back to talking money with Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. How you doing? This is it. Final show of 2011. Maybe next year you'll get a little better quality out of this hour. I don't know. Probably not likely. 339-1140, If you want to jump in today, you can text us at 441140. My uh, quiz question before the break, the uh, producers of the movie Hangover 2, Part 2, were getting sued again. First thing, they got sued by a gentleman named S. Victor Whitmill, a tattoo artist in Missouri who gained notoriety for uh, inking boxer Mike Tyson's face. They settled with him, and another company sued them recently, or is in suing them now recently, over a product placement in their movie without permission, they said, or wasn't the right product. I think that answer's coming. We, Amir got it right. I think the answer. You got the answer there, Chris? Don't be ridiculous. You're sitting here. Careful, that's a Louis... That is a Louis Vuitton. <laughs> that's right. That is a Louis Vuitton. Turns out it was not a Louis Vuitton. So Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, is suing the uh, movie makers for um, depicting their product when it was not their product. And uh, so he'll see how that shakes out. Interesting note. Anybody watch Storage Wars? Anybody else watch Storage Wars on a Do you like that show, Chris? You don't watch it? Chris, you do not watch Storage Wars. Never saw it, and I heard it's fake. Oh, f- tur- turn your microphone on. Come here. I'm gonna, come here so I can smack you in the head. If you tell me that's fake, we're going to fight right now on the air. It is, well, I know. I've always heard stories that they load up, uh, uh, they'll load it up after they buy it, and they're like, "Oh wow, look at these rare paintings that we found." Yeah, I, I do. I do think there's probably something to that. Uh, you know, sometimes you 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 know, we yeah, we found gold coins, and I mean, there's probably some some truth in there. I think most most of what they buy generally is is not an off the wall type of a product. So, but anyway, uh, storage. This article mentioned storage wars because one of the uh, storage storage lockers that the couple bought had a what she thought was a Louis Vuitton bag in it. And Storage Wars, the producers were so afraid they were going to get sued by Louis Vuitton because they have a tendency to do this. They actually blurred out the bag and wouldn't, you know, she, she could say Louis Vuitton, but they wouldn't show it. And then they went on f- further to fill. So those of you who watch that show know Dave Hester, who does the, yup, that, that sound. Well, he's trying to um, uh, patent that sound, and he's in a fight with a rapper called uh, Trey Songs who claims that that's his signature sound. So lots of entertainment sewage going around. See, suing, sewage. So uh, we got Amir got that right. We'll get him out of some uh, whatever he wanted to win. We'll get it out to him as soon as possible. Hey, last week I had a chance to briefly, in a brief show, kind of just go through and uh, give you a little history of, of this radio program and myself. And, and I left out two people last week because I was really was concentrating on the show behind the scenes people here at the station and I left out a couple people that um, I should have mentioned and, and certainly one of them is Electric Mike and uh, anything you hear from me other than me speaking live is produced by Electric Mike uh, all my commercials all the sounds all the rejoiners everything the guy's a perfectionist and um, has been helping me do things and create got the old ATM mortgage jingle, which to this day, people still sing that jingle to me, ATM or that one, uh, Mike created sings a lot of them. So, um, I needed to recognize electric Mike and certainly uh, Nick Perjanic who, um, had helped me get it, this thing going. And Nick is someone who, when he sits here at this radio show, he's not sitting here for your listening pleasure. He's sitting here for my listening pleasure and he doesn't say a lot. He doesn't jump in a lot, but I can look at him and I know whether I'm going off the deep end or I should move on or whatever. And and if you've ever done this, you ever sat behind the microphone and it's your job to sit here for an hour or more and host the show, having just someone over there who could just fill in even just for 15 seconds or 20 seconds here and there is amazing how helpful that can be just to just to catch your breath and um, and collect your thoughts for a minute. And so... Uh, anyway, I wanted to say thanks to Nick, and of course I mess—I forgot to mention our stalker fan Karen, who's been listening from day one, and um, will probably put my head in a headlock if I don't mention her name. So I will get that out there as well. So anyway, the market—if you had to guess, how do you think the markets did this year? I mean, just off the top of your head, if you had to just a gut reaction without looking at the paper. So do you think in general 
were stocks up or down for the year? Gold, I mean, gold Gold had to be maybe a, a sub-minor story of the year. Gold that started the year at um, about 13, 1400 bucks an ounce, went as high as 1888, trickled back down. So what do you, where do you think gold ended for the year? If you, if you invested in gold, and remember, if you invested in gold, you didn't get any return, right? Unless you sold it. So hopefully you sold it sometime around, looking at the calendar there, maybe August or September at about almost 1900 bucks. So gold returned, if you had bought it the year beginning and sold at year end, gold uh, returned about 10%. So out of all of the gold stories, do you think, uh, you would have thought it would have maybe done a little better than that. The stock market returned 6%. And it was much higher than that, probably closer to 10 or 11% midway through the year and just kind of petered out at the end there. Um, and a lot of the commodities, which you think, when you think everything is kind of going bad or kind of you know, counterintuitive to the market, which is why gold went up because everybody thinks the, you know, the economy is stalling out. So bonds, you know, mortgage rates went down because people are buying more mortgage-backed securities. So that was good. So all those things. But you look at copper and cotton and corn, you know, a lot of those commodities ended up you know, either down or flat. So it was kind of an interesting year when you think you think back of all the news on these things, and yet at the last day of the year, they they kind of were just you know moderate, moderately up or moderately down, nothing dramatic. You know, in in either event, I did see uh, one story that I thought was interesting. We talked about this a few times through the year. Okay, someone's calling me an old man on the text line there, Chris. Trey Songs is an R and B rapper, you old man. <clears throat> Even if I was 20, I wasn't, I wasn't a, uh, I'm not an R&B rapper guy. So it wouldn't matter whether I'm 45 or 25, I don't know who Trey Songs is. Okay. And, and part of me takes a little pride in that. I don't know why. <laughs> hey, do you know who Van Halen is there, dude? Is the original Van Halen? I hired him for my birthday party. So part of the uh, news that was, we were going to try to do this year, or the government said they were going to try to do, that was a reference... Did you get that reference? Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Now I feel old. <laughs> Little Ridgemont High. I'm wearing the checkered vans right now. I have them on. Okay. It's not your time. It's our time, Mr. Hand. Um, I cannot focus on any one thing at a time. You know what? Let's 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 take another break. Uh, this the text machine always gets me off. Everybody always, always asks me, "Do you like the text the the text line thing?" I I miss people calling in, but I do like the text line. It makes me laugh out loud. Okay, here's my quiz question. Hey, speaking of old man, Mr. 209, who knows everything about R&B rappers, who is AKB48? AKB48. 339-1140. 1-800-920-1140. Or you can text me at 441140. Who or what is AKB48? This is Talking Money. I'm the old fart in the chair. We'll be right back. <laughs> 